Welcome to the Hopening, the place where hope is happening, with your hosts Fran Cadron and Marina Teran Manery. For more information about Fran and Marina, or to apply to be a guest on the show, please go to our website www.hopening.com. The Hopening is for informal purposes only and is based on the research of your hosts. Fran and Marina, they as well as their guests, are not responsible for any losses, damages or liabilities that may arise from this podcast, which is not intended to replace any professional medical advice or care by medical professionals you are currently utilizing. Hello everyone and welcome to The Hopening. This is the place where hope is happening. I am Fran, and I live in Northern Alberta, Canada, with my beautiful co-host, Marina, who lives in Southern Alberta, Canada. And we are here today on episode number 120 with our amazing guest, Peter Paul Parker. Now, Peter Paul Parker, he's a Dan master in body, mind, and spirit, and a musician and sound healer. He works with both the energy and physical body. He is a Ki Jong champion, winning the international competition with a British team in Korea in 2016. Peter runs a successful coaching business, achieving amazing results for his clients and he helps them connect to their authentic self-image. He also has set up a local charity called Brighter Living, helping the elderly with their health and well-being using Qigong and meditation. He's worked in many fields and schools locally, helping students connect with themselves. Peter has launched the Bright Beings Academy online internationally, which incorporates everything that he does to empower people to reach, to reach their fullest potential. Thank you, Peter, for being here. And it is a pleasure to have you on. And because of that, we're bringing you back for a, a second time. But as for today, uh, we welcome you greatly. And thank you for being here. Oh, very wonderful to be here. And thank you for such a wonderful introduction. It's almost like you're talking about somebody else. <laughs> it's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we're so blessed to have you here, Peter. So we normally ask right at the beginning, what is your journey? What brought you from point zero to where you are today? When I uh, when I was very young, I had a like a really bad sort of itch inside of me to think, there's more to this. There's something more to this. There's, uh, this isn't right. Um, I was born into a really idyllic family of five boys. I had five brothers, five, four older brothers and one younger brother. Um, and it was all really good, but I just kept on thinking, why are people acting like this? It felt really, really strange to me. And I, I've always kept that question within me. It was because they were all arguing and fighting, typical sort of siblings as brothers. And I just didn't think it was right. But I played the game and, and, and analysed and watched them and, and learned protection mechanisms and things like that to, to, to fix myself. But unfortunately, when I, when I, my, my father became disabled when I was 10 years of age, and that really rocked our world because my mother was looking after the boys as well as me. And now she was looking after my father and she developed cancer and she died of a failed operation on her gallstones when she was, when I was 11, she was in her forties. And that was that really ripped my world apart because I was very sensitive at the time. And my mother was really the only one who was listening to me in the family. And my friends didn't really understand me that well because they're thinking, why is this guy so sensitive? Um, not in the in, in the precious way, but more in like really feeling around my environment. Um, but I was sent off to boarding school. I had a terrible time at boarding school. And then finally, my father died when I was 19 and decided to tried to follow the education that I had and jumped into sales. I got into sales, selling um, advertising space, actually, for Yellow Pages. Do you remember the days of Yellow Pages? And it was some of the top sales training that I actually went through. And I couldn't, again, I had that same itch inside of me thinking, this this isn't right. There's, there's something more to this. Because I was seeing really um, quite, well, not so authentic people really doing well and the ones like me who are really authentic and, and really good at selling, actually, 
um, slowly, slowly building up, going up the ranks, while the other ones were flying up the ranks. I thought, this is, this is not for me either. So at that point, I decided I'm going to become a professional musician, but it wasn't just a whim. I was interested in music from a very, very early age and used to play with my tennis racket when I was eight or nine years of age in front of the mirror going, love, love, me too, <laughs> that kind of stuff. So I thought, and, and I trained to be, a, um, I had um, done a bit of bit of training to be a musician. I've had some lessons at school, so it wasn't just a, a pipe dream. So I literally gave up my mortgage and my, my professional career to become a musician. And that was the beginning of something really wonderful for me because it was, it was, it melt made me feel like I'm not going down the route that I was supposed to go down or expected to go down because everybody was saying you're crazy giving up this to go and do music I started to feel like actually I'm in, I'm in control of this destiny now and I'm starting to move in the direction that I want to so I was, I was mixing more with sensitive people at that point and it felt good to me and I practiced and practiced and went to bass college and learnt all the scales of music I was still very nervous at going to auditions, but I thought to myself, if I work so hard at knowing the theory of music and also have lots of funny anecdotes to talk about music with other, with other musicians that I meet, then I'll, I'll fit in a, a lot better. So I did that. And for about 10 years, I was, um, prof I was a professional musician. I'd toured UK, Europe. I'd been on albums, released albums for myself and had a great time. But, it, but towards the end of it, I was, I was, again, I was feeling that itch came back and thinking, this isn't it. This isn't, this isn't good enough. This is just, it became, <clears throat> excuse me, drunken people in front of me just having a party, which is all good and all fine. But I thought, this is not who I am. This is, this is not giving me anything. I felt hollow inside. And it naturally kind of closed in on me. I, I released an album from New World Music called Anna Heart at Earth Echoes. And I remember looking up at the album and, and seeing that it was um, being released on all these pirate sites. And I looked into how much you make as a musician um, professionally as a, like a solo artist releasing album. It was about $5,000 a year, which is <laughs> nobody can live off that as far as I'm concerned. So I, that was the end of it for me. I thought and, and one of the, the last bands I was in, really was all, they're all talking about image rather than the actual music that you're producing and i was in it for the art not for the for, for the fame or anything like that because i've had all of that before been recognized in supermarkets go oh, i saw you on the telly yesterday and I just thought i don't want any of that as to i don't know why people do want that actually um so that waned and then my wife and i we went to a mind body spirit festival and i was thinking well what am i going to do in my life I'm, I'm i'm getting a bit washed up here and we had our Curlian photography taken, which is Dr. Curlian, is, he photographs energy around bodies. And I wasn't really knowing very much about this whatsoever. So I just went with it and we, we were fascinated by what, what they were saying the auras were on the bodies. And mine was blue and, and, and purple, which was all esoteric, which is the guide was telling me it's all esoteric, you're into the esoteric, which is very true. And they said about, to my wife, she had this beautiful golden red aura which she said you're very much an earth child and i thought well she is she's like a tourist and i'm a virgo i'm more looking into the outward world she's more grounded and keeps me down to the earth as it were so we went round to this um other place other other uh, stall at the festival and it was koreans there and they were had the same machine to test the curly and photography and she said, oh, I've got to have another go. I want to try and get one like yours. I go, okay, there's no competition. <laughs> it's not like mine, yours. We are all a unique in, in, individuals. So she had it done. And while I was talking, I was speaking to one of the Korean masters there and I was giving her the old pity, pity story, a pity party I was having for myself. And she was sitting there patiently listening to me and bless her for doing that because I wouldn't want to listen to me at that point, <laughs> really. And she said, why don't you come and take a class? Come and, come and try one of our classes. And luckily enough, I wasn't worried about that. Where a lot of men are worried about group exercise classes because of, I don't know, but I wasn't because I trained under the Bruce Lee system in my early 20s. And so I went to the classes and within about two or three weeks, I'd found my stress and anxiety dropping very, very quickly when I focused on the teachings. And then after quite a long while, 
I started to release the trauma and that's been an ongoing process ever since, but it's been an incredible. And that's what's really, that was the starting point of where I am today was that point of actually starting with the classes and realizing I can heal myself, which I thought was incredible sort of journey. So that's a bit, bit of a potted history, but that's how I've got to this journey today. I've always had that itch inside of me thinking there's something more to this. There's something more to this and always drive me on to the next thing. So, yeah. So Peter, you, uh, you're from your accent, you're British. So where, where in, where in Britain are you from? Kingston upon Thames. Kingston upon Thames is uh, one of the. It was quite a small town when I was born into it. I, I'm living local again. I've been a bit around this area, but I'm come back local again. I'm in the same borough now, and I remember seeing uh, adverts for it to say this is going to be the biggest shopping centre in Europe, and I thought, yeah, right, because it was just like the Bentles. It, like, it was like a block. The shopping centre in Kingston was like a block. Now the expanse of the shopping centre is just, it take you half a day to walk around it. It's, in, it's enormous. So it's its like a, the reason it's called Kingston is because it used to be the King's Stone. It, it's uh, got very ancient heritage to it. So it's where the King's Stone used to, to live, where they used to come and uh, the, the, the kings used to come and get throned, as it were. Um, so it's a, yeah, it's, a, it's a very famous area. I, I love Kingston because it's, close enough to the big smoke as it were the city of london and it's far enough away for you to get out into the country whenever you need to so it's quite a nice place to be but even saying that it's getting busier and busier now so I'm, we are looking at devon and dorset only with half an eye <laughs> but it's a beautiful yeah kingston has got lots of history and i'm involved with a lot of charity work here so i'm really enjoying that as well so it would be quite a a pull for for me to actually stop doing that right now the reason i asked i just yeah the reason i asked is um i'm we're in canada and because we've got that colonial you know because of britain and france but mostly britain on, on this side of canada there is a certain uh stereotype i guess about staunch British people that, you know, just power through and, uh, you know, that they, they're funny, but you wouldn't know it by their face. And <laughs> yes. I, right. And yes, I, yes. I, I, I'm wondering if because you were raised in Britain, if that played into that you had to be this strength, big, strong boy in this, you know, you had there was six boys in your family, right? Yeah, yeah. If that played into how you seem to not feel like you didn't really didn't fit in into your family of origin, um, because of who you you know because of your feelings inside, but also because of the culture that was around you. Definitely, um, I loved my father in the respect. Whenever I said I couldn't, oh, I can't do that. He used to go, "There's no such word as can't. There's no such word as can't." Whereas when I was at school, they were saying, well, you can't, Parker, you can't do that. What's the matter with you? You can't do that. Whereas my father always said, you can. So he instilled this uh, system in me that was like a belief system to spot when I was being conditioned into saying, I can't do that. And that's part of, I think, the culture that we are born into, um, especially the schooling I went to. It was go to the newspapers for your information um, learn how to accept what's being told to you and then just repeat it. And that kind of thing was what we were being taught at in school, which was supposed to be like one of the top schools in England. And I thought, no, no, this is, this is not right. Surely people should be able to evolve and adapt as they see fit inside of themselves. I didn't realize it at the time, but I realize now it's when you connect with the inside of you, the, the, the inner core of you, and then you start to project that out into the world. That's when you feel happy and content and you feel that itch goes away, that, that gnawing feeling, thinking, well, I've got to be doing something. It all disappears. And that's what my battle has been with myself is to get myself out of the way so I can actually be myself. Um, and that's been a heck, of a, a heck of a journey because of the condition that I did go through at school. And I, and I'll share this with you. And it, it's no it's no disrespect to anybody who is religious or anything like that. But 
we were raised as as a Catholics, and I still adhere to the teachings of Jesus. But I had a real problem with the word heretic because I had so many questions about everything, and I just questioned everything, especially at school. And I, and I, and I got into trouble because I was questioning, not in a nasty manner, just saying, "Well, you know, what, what's that all about? And what's that all about?" And I had a had a real conditioned look at the uh, feeling about the word heretic because I remember as I was getting older, I'm going, oh my goodness me, I'm a heretic. And it's got, had such a bad connotation to it. And all it means is questioner. That's all it means. You're a questioner. It doesn't mean you're a bad person, but I thought <gasps> I'm a bad person because I'm a heretic. And I, it's, it's the same. Um, my brothers used to use the word Philistines um, from the Bible. And I'm thinking, Philistines, they weren't bad people. <laughs> so why, why are you using that as a derogative comment? So Yes, it was the conditioning was very difficult for me to break down in, in my um, as I was growing up, thinking there were certain things in my life that I, I, it made me come back to the conditioning, thinking, am I right or am I wrong here? What, what's going on? It was a real a journey of self-discovery. Dr. Bark from the Bark Flower um, healing method, which I've actually studied, he calls it unpeeling the onion or in, in, our, um, in, in the Qigong practice that I use, we call it polishing the diamond. Actually, in, in Islam, they call it polishing the mirror. In 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 the early Christian, the Gnostic um, version of it, they, they say light in the Christ spark, the Christos inside of you. So it's all about coming inside to yourself. And I didn't realize that at the time I was I was thrashing about in the dark thinking, what, where am I going with this? What am I doing? And, 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 am I crazy? You know, you're always thinking, is it me? Is, is there something wrong with me? Because everybody else seems to be functioning quite well. But I'll tell you what broke that down for me, that conditioning, is when I went to speak to people when I was gigging because we were touring quite a lot, so there'd be lots of time for talking to other people. When I started to scratch this, because it was always deep and meaningful conversations I was after. I was never one of the, the flippant people to go and have a chat with people, but I'd always scratch the surface of other people and I'd realise, wow, your life, even though you've got all this, your life isn't that great either. So what, what, is, the, what is behind this? What's, what's the meaning of all this? And that's the questioning mind, the curious mind that I've always had. And again, we, we've been brought up with the expression, curiosity killed the cat. So you're not supposed to be curious and asking. You're supposed to be, nope, this is what you do. This is how you do it. Bang, 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 bang. And this is your path forward. I've never really liked that at all. Um, and I've always tried to reject it. So yes, culture and cultural conditioning, um, English and, and the Canadians, we are very much alike in that respect, I do feel, yes. Well, I, I can definitely tell we are from the same generation. And um, I grew up in South Africa, so there was a huge um, British influence there as well, even though I'm from the very African side and they didn't really like each other that much. But it does influence you. And with colonialism came a lot of, of health care and roads and, and positive things as well, not only negative things. Um, so... I understand a lot of the conditioning that you talk about religion as well. And I was the heretic as well. So questioning <laughs> everything. Yeah, yeah. And, um, so I understand so much of what you're saying because, Peter, I'm also a musician. Ah, and brilliant. Also, I'm a singer. I was an opera singer. And then when I got divorced, it was no income for me. I At that point, I had to make a choice to to go where, where I could actually su uh, support my children so, um, yeah, there's so much in your story that really resonates with me. So in in relationships in your life, when when you started to change, how did that change your relationship with your siblings? I, I believe your father may not have been around by then, but um, how did that change? Uh, I was I used to accept them for making me feel that I was weird or different or unusual or not quite seeing the big picture or oversensitive or think too much about things. I accepted that for many, many years. And then there was a point when I just said, I'm not putting up with this anymore. I said, I, I, I see this. This is, this is a fact. This is a reality. I see this. And it would come to, it would be quite deep discussions on politics or, or religion or just the way that we live our lives in the world, it, it, there would be quite deep discussions on that. And I say, you're not going to wash that. You know, I'm not going to be washed with that brush anymore, being highly sensitive, overthinking, 
seeing too much into things because I think when you when you give someone a whitewash like that, I think that's unfair to how they see things. And that's what's happened with my family is I've, I've fallen out with virtually all of them. I I still speak with them and I'm always very polite and courteous with them. And I'm always the one that makes them all laugh anyway. So it's they, they come to me whenever there was family gatherings for them for me to entertain them. I don't do that anymore because I just found it a little bit um, compromising of myself. Because if you if you can't take me for what I see, and it is hard when you when you they call it lifting of the veil, the apocalypse. When you see past the veil of this world and you look into it, you go, "Wow, look at look at this beauty!" But look at this mess. And I was saying, I, I want to go to the beauty and I want to get past the mess. But you're stuck in the mess and you want to keep dragging me back to the mess and I don't want to be in the mess. And I can see why the mess is um, and what it is and where it's come from and why it is why it is. But my relationship with my family is not is not great. No, it's, um, I don't fall out with them. I, I'll, I'll speak to them. But they all have not been through this healing process. And there's a healing process that we all need to go through to get to the inner self, the, the inner core of ourselves. Because there's always the love I have with my brothers, always, always deep, profound love for them because of the DNA, our mother and father's DNA that came in, and we share that. Um, but the the other side of it, the the spiritual side of it, uh, the energetic aspect of it, we're completely opposites, all of us. The, the, the four of them are much the same. I'd say five of them. But I'd say they're all the same part from me. I am completely different to all of them. And that's uh, that's just how it was and how it is. And so, I still have so many fond memories of growing up with them. And but I, I can't, I can't go into conversations with them and, and, and feel jeopardised with being attacked for saying something or saying uh, having an opinion on something. Whereas I don't really do that anymore. Any anyway, but it, it's um, it's very difficult when you're in that situation to to say. Okay, well, this is my; these are my boundaries here, and you're not going to cross my boundaries, um, and I don't want to stand here being protective of myself. So I will, I'm going to say my piece, and if you attack me, I'm, I'm just going to walk out the room because I, I, I don't want any more violence or fighting or any in 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 a turmoil inside of me. And that's not really any way to run any relationships, really, because there's times when I feel that we're just not going to see eye to eye, and I, I find that difficult to accept because I love my brothers very dearly, but I've had to, had to take that stance because it's been no good for my growth or development. And I'm not hard or fast with that either. I, I'll welcome them back with open arms into my life if they wanted to come back into it. That's no problem at all because we haven't fallen out. It's just we've drifted apart. And that's what I find when you go on this um, venture for yourself into spiritual development, you can drift apart from the people that you really love. And that's Part of the hard part of doing what I've done is this journey inside is to what is going on here? What is going, what is this all about? Why why am I getting these crazy feelings and thoughts? And we can get into that because that that was a fascinating journey in itself. But yeah, to answer your question about my family, is is um, it's not that we're not speaking, but I don't see them at all anymore. I want to follow up on that and bring Fran into this because. Um, so much of that, Peter, I resonate with in my own spiritual growth is having to detach from the story that used to be told about me and yes. finding myself polishing that diamond <laughs> yes. and seeing it within myself so that I can just not make the huge distinction that I'm just not doing that anymore. So Fran, you grow up, grew up with many, many, many siblings. So mm -hmm. how did your growth and development change relationship? I want to ask you the same question. Oh my goodness, Peter, you're telling my story. I <laughs> right? You yeah, had yeah. five, no, you had four older brothers. Four right? older brothers, one younger brother, yeah. Yeah. And I had six older brothers. Oh my six, goodness, me. And one younger brother. And how many older sisters? Four. Three. Three. And one younger Jeez. sister. Right? How so many of twelve? I, yeah. Twelve of us. And so Oh, oh my goodness. goodness, your story is so close to our story. Because, yeah, when you get that many boys together, all lumped together, you swing it out. 
when you've got a problem, you don't talk about it. You fight about it. And yes, yes. You, you, uh, as a young girl growing up, this is what I saw. I saw my brothers fighting. And then I saw my sisters, the older ones, uh, just being girls kind of stuff. But we were the catty ones. The girls are catty. And so sometimes we do get out. But most of the time it's cattiness. And you're um spiritual journey it's true uh you call i forget what you called it um uh, but in our I, in here we call it the crabs in the bucket the crabs in the bucket pulling you down as soon as you try to get out of the bucket and um so yes there i mean i love my siblings i can't not love them but i mm. am the one that gathers them together and it's difficult to get out of that role of being the little sister who doesn't know anything because yes. <laughs> I'm in my 60s. So when do I get to get out of the role of actually <laughs> knowing somebody, knowing something, right? Yes, or, yes, yes. Or being more than just this little girl who cleans up after the boys. Yeah. Amazing. So, I can't imagine. I can't imagine what I was like. But I was always asking my my family when when everything was working well for a little sister. I did. What, I was yearning for a little sister, someone to talk to, in that respect, in a bit more of a um, sensitive way. Uh, not that I can't speak like the boys. I can. I can go. To, I used to be able to go to a bar and, and be one of the lads. I, I could. I can do that. But I only do that for a certain amount of times. I, I just find it. I, I, I can't do it now. I've, I just found it tedious at the time, thinking, oh what's the next joke coming and the next one liner and all this kind of stuff and the bravado, you know, Oh yeah, I've got bigger shoulders than you and look at me, I've done this and that. And they're thinking, what's the point in all of that? When you really look at it, we're tiny micro dots in an enormous universe and it doesn't matter which dot is bigger than the other one. We're, surely the, the idea of all of this is to work out what are we, what are we doing as these tiny little micro dots in this enormous universe. And that's, that's what I was always thinking. So yeah, what amazing story you got there, Fran. Yeah. Thank you. A big family. Big family. Wow. <laughs> That's what we did here in Canada, right? As yes. If you've got land, you need people to farm it. So ah, that's that's what we did. So amazing. Yeah, the the story of your childhood really does resonate with both Marina and me uh, because that family dynamic stays with you. And unless you recognize, okay, I see what's going on here, the the awareness, um, until you're aware, you can't change it, right? You can't yes. change it. Exactly. So. It's the awareness of everything. Is is this what I keep saying to my clients? Is you have to be aware of what's going on before you can heal it. Because if you're not aware of it, which is so many people aren't aware of it, they bury it with either work or alcohol or drugs or um, obsessions with things like too much video games or anything like that, is to get yourself away from the awareness of what's, what is what is there. And it's and I, I get that. There's a lot of people who are worried about it. I was worried about it. Because I was, I was, there's times through my journey, I was literally losing my mind because my mind was this mental picture that I had of myself. My self-image was the mental picture I had of myself. And I was losing parts of that, which was my protection mechanism to actually move me forward. And it was like, I'm losing my mind here. Who am I? What am I doing <laughs> again? But this was, this was in a good environment instead of a nasty environment. So it's all of this is all set up for us to learn It's for us to learn and move forward and grow. So, yeah, it's uh, families are the beginnings of that. And some people say that we, are, we, we get born into our families for this particular reason is to learn this. This is an enormous lesson because you're with somebody with you, you truly love as a brother or a sister, but you learn, you see that gap in, in them and you, and you, you start to witness that gap. And that gap is something that you need to heal somehow in yourself. And that's what I found fascinating by all of this more than anything else is the growth inside of me while they literally stayed stagnant in their pool where they were sitting. And that's what I found sad really in, in the long run is that they weren't growing. And that's what I, I do truly believe we're here to grow. We're here to learn and grow and expand our consciousness. 
and we're here to um, sustain our body. But we got it the other way around because our consciousness is not growing or expanding or our, our soul isn't, and our physical body, we're, we're consuming too much and it's not it's not sustaining itself. It's becoming diseased and sick. So that's why I love Qigong because that it, it literally flips that pyramid. We call it flipping the pyramid where um, we have too much energy in the head so all the energy is up here and not enough energy, what we call the lower Dan John. So the pyramid is upside down in most human beings. And then when I flip this pyramid, so all the energy was in my lower Dan John, um, the, the energy center of the body, and then the pyramid went upwards. This is, a, this is naturally how it works with the lower frequencies of the lower Dan John being long waveforms. And this is all the, the the heavier energy that needs to be down there where the body can sustain it and, and look after it and actually shed it. And then the higher energies as the pyramid goes up is all the the, the higher information that we can receive from our pineal gland. It's, um, it's a fascinating way of seeing it. But I just see my brothers now as upside down pyramids, walking around as upside down pyramids. Too much information in the head, too much intellect, not enough intellect turning into experience which goes to wisdom. And then you've got that triangle that forever grows after that, which I think is important for all of us to learn. Um, because when we, when we just, which is what we're trying to do again, our conditioning in, in the Western world is to cram our left brain as much as we possibly can with all this information, the repetition, 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 and then regurgitate it back out onto a piece of paper. And then you get your degrees and your BSEs and all your big fancy letters after your names. What's happened to the right brain? The intuitive, the, the intuition, the 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 seeing past the box. And again, when I used to go to the doctors, I used to research what was wrong with me. I go and sit and, and talk with the doctors and go, "Well, I've got this, and I'm and I've looked into this, blah blah blah, and I, I see this, and and blah 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 blah." And then the doctor turned around, one one doctor actually turned around and said, "What on earth have you come to see me for?" <laughs> and I put my hands up and go, "Oh my goodness." That is making me realize that we shouldn't be relying on the left brain as we do uh, as a society. We need to be starting to move into the more creative brain and to me to be more childlike, not childish. We seem to be very childish as a, as a, as a general society, but childlike, i.e. curious, opening the imagination, let yourself flow with energy so that your imagination can work. And that will take you to places you would even dream of i've i mean I've, I've been in situations where i what am i doing here this is this is just incredible and it's about my imagination and my drive and my th thought process to think okay i'm going to do this i don't know how i'm going to do this but it's going to happen so i'll work on it and work on it and work on it and sure enough there you are in in, in these amazing places so yeah i think the conditioning in our left brain we're too dominant in our society with that it's so interesting because I've been criticized for being too right brain many, many times in my life, musician, you know, um, and work walking with my heart on my sleeve and being too sensitive. And <laughs> it sounds like me. In, yes, too big up in imagination. <laughs> so it's all in your imagination. And in the end of the day, it's almost like I could see things um, in people that, that they did not want me to see. But uh, so a lot of the <laughs> story really resonates with me. And I can really see this pyramid. And it's interesting because I watched a video of a hypnotherapy session yesterday where the guy said exactly that, um, a person who had severe anxiety, and it was actually, we do so much on Zoom these days, but there's a client, um, he could just lightly push him and he would fall over. And he said, because you carry all your energy in your head. And then he just said, okay, focus down below and and um, around your navel and put all your energy there. And they couldn't push him over and suddenly the anxiety was gone. So it's just crazy how this works. So that pyramid really resonates with me. So from being a sensitive person myself, Peter, I, um, I know that one of the things that I always wanted to do with my family was to fix them, to see that they live in the heads only. And um, so at some point I had to come to terms with, mm, I need to work on myself and that's the most important thing and working on myself and polishing that diamond in me became just so important to me. How is that with you? Because you do this as, as a living now, you help people to polish their mm -hmm. own diamonds, to live the better version of themselves. 
what point do you step back and say, I cannot, that's not my responsibility? That's a really amazing question because you have to help the people who come to you. You cannot allow your energy to be dragged away by anybody or anything else. That's why I say at the end of my Qigong class when we're doing the, the centering of the energy, don't let anybody take your energy, center your energy, bring it down into the middle of your body. So I've done general advertising for uh, the dream method, the coaching program that I do. And I've had people just turn up saying, well, how long is this going to take? How much is it going to cost? What's, what's it? I go, no, you're the wrong person. You're the, you, you, I, I, stop the conversation here right now. Not even going to go there. And I'll literally vet people for two or three calls before I'll even take them on as a client because there's no point in taking people on just for money. There's no point. It's, it's a ridiculous thing to do. With the classes, that's slightly different. People come in, I meet them, I realize you're not going to stay. You're not going to stay. So they come for one class and you get all the um, the chat at the end. It goes, oh, yeah, that was wonderful, really lovely. I'll see you next week. And I'm thinking, no, I won't. And sure enough, they don't turn up. It's about a resonance you feel inside of somebody. And it's uh, when you perceive it, you think, okay, that's really beyond the scope of what I'm offering here. You know, I think that there's, there's, it would take too long. Because with a with a certain with certain co coaching packages, it, it needs to be a set amount of time unless you want to go on and on and on. And it's usually too expensive for most people. But with Qigong, you can do the classes, and you don't even have to mention the deeper esoteric aspects of it. Uh, for instance, one of the ladies who come to my my class down the road, she had to stop doing a certain exercise class and, and was looking for another one. And she had no idea what Qigong was. So she came along and really enjoyed it. And then after about three months, she came up to me and goes, you know what? I'm becoming a better person. And I said, what do you mean? She said, I'm seeing more in my relationships with people. I'm understanding myself better. I'm starting to realize what I've got to do now to actually heal myself but also I'm seeing how I can help other people if and when I can. And I go, there you go. That's what it means connecting with yourself. So that it, there's a lot of people at the moment who are waking up. They're starting to realize there's something more to what's happening in the world at the moment than what is meets the eye. What, what we're being shown on the TV is a calamity as far as I'm concerned. What's really happening is an amazing overhaul of the energies on the planet. So people are starting to pick up on that. But because of the condition that we've had as human beings, they want a sugar pool or, or, or a magic silver bullet. Go, well, how do I do this? And then I'll, I'll look at my watch and go, well, how long have you got? Because <laughs> it takes time to explain how this all works, in, in, with not only mentally but physically as well, because it's, it's a physical thing as well as a mental thing. Our bodies are like antennas for this whole experience that we're having in the world at the moment. And we're not actually using our antennas because they've been clogged up with all the junk that's in our environment, all the, all the junk in the water, all the, all the pharmaceuticals we've been taking, all the, all the bad food that's been offered to us in the supermarkets and all the, 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 the terrible um, depreciation of our intellect and our mind of, of the junk that's being offered to us as entertainment is just, it's declining. We're just watching something on the TV with f from the 1950s and listening to those songs and you're going, that song has got a meaning to it. That's, that's, re that's a really profound song. And you listen to that song um, and then you listen to a song that's coming out today going, what, what are they talking about? Just, there's no meaning to that. So to, to, to answer your question, it's, it's very difficult to decipher, but your intuition gets better as you do that as a coach to realise... I'm not going to, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to work with you. Um, and I'm, I'm very kind like that, but it, it's how it's got to be done. But otherwise, what's the point in doing a 12 week course is going to cost you money where you don't get anything out of it. I, I want to dig deep. I want to get into where you're at and then help you to come out of that and navigate through life as a flow, not as a force. We think of force as because, again, our society and our culture has been made to think force is the way forward. This is how you do it. Very male. Force, force. 
power. Power has, has a completely different aspect to it where it's a flow and you're powerful because you're like Gandhi. Gandhi's a brilliant um, example of power where you're not coming past this. This is it. You can do whatever you want. You can shoot me. You can hit me. You can whip me. You can do whatever you want to me. I'm not going to react to anything that you do, but you are not budging this. Powerful. It's really powerful. And when we start to use our power and use it in the right way, then doors start to open for you. And that's where I find it very difficult, which is why most of my clients are female, actually, because the male wants to, how do I do this? How do I do this? Force, force, force. And when you do get males who are willing to do this, you see them change and soften and, and flow. You think, well, this is beautiful. Now you are literally yin and yang. You're the male and female. Same with women. Women are yin and yang. We're, we're, we're the same in that aspect. We have biological bodies, but our energetic bodies, I would say, are much the same. It's our, our physical bodies are obviously male and female, but the energetic bodies, it's, it's how you have to have that balance of male and female in it. And a lot of men have got too much male energy and a lot of females have got too much female energy. When you bring that together in yourself, you become actually a complete human being is in my opinion humble opinion to 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 realize i can do this for myself and when i meet somebody to complete that yin and yang it's not because i need it it's because it's complementary with each other and i find that i need that with my coaching as well it needs to be complementary with each other because each time i coach somebody i'm learning as well each time somebody comes into my qigong class and they speak to me i'm learning as well it's that 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 story with the, the, the young boy who's looking up at the mountain. There's a house halfway up the mountain. He goes, one day, one day I'm going to go up and meet that enlightened master and learn all about wisdom and everything. And all his friends are like taking the mickey out of him. Yeah, 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 whenever you go, whenever, whenever, whenever. So he never does it. About five years later, he finally goes up there, goes up to the house, sees this beautiful garden, this beautiful house impeccably kept. He knocks on the door and this old man opens the door, goes, can I help you? He said, I'm looking for the master because I need to be taught enlightenment. So the, the man takes him through the house, takes him out the back door and says, you can find your village by going down the road there and just turning left. He goes, hang on a minute. What about the master? What about the master? And, and the man says, you learn from everybody that you meet. And that is so important because we tend to write off other people that, we, oh no, it's not worth talking to. And then people say, well, why do you give so many people so much time? Because you never know what nugget's in there for you. And you never know what nugget you can give to them. This, this is all about sharing. But there are times when you suddenly realise there's nothing here. Get out quick. <laughs> You've got to get out quick. So there are times like that. But, yeah, it's, that's a very interesting question. And I think um, it's about intuition. And your intuition does grow when you allow it to. Or as, as you know, like Joe Dispenser's work on the pineal gland i've done the same as well it's, it's that intuition that grows that's really important for us to learn that we're so much more than this physical body we are so much more and we can get into that if you want yeah, yeah so you talk about um becoming more intuitive and uh marine and i talk about this a lot on the show because we both are naturally intuitive. Um, I know it's a gift, right? It's just a gift. And um, but for those people that aren't, that aren't uh, intuitive, either inside going in or intuitive to out, uh, what are some practices that you do? Um, I know that we know that you do the qigong, but what other practices do you do to really? maybe even teach your clients to become more intuitive going in and going out. I use the, the dream method is um, because what happens is the physical aspects of the body get really weighed down by all the heavy emotions, feelings, and thoughts that happen in the body. So I use the, the five steps of the dream method. So it's firstly discovering. So you've got to discover where your roadblocks are, what's happening inside of your body. And I love this research that's coming out now. It's not, it's not, not really mainstream scientific research, but they're saying because the body's like 75, 80% water, that holds memory. 
So how much of our subconscious is held in the, in, in the water of our body? Because that makes me think, because when we do the exercise and we're trying to discover what's holding you back and you tap all over the body, you stretch out the meridians, you, you wake up the chakra system, you clear them all out, how much is that releasing? And I know when I was doing my training, it wasn't that long ago, about a year and a half ago, when I was, I was like uh, doing, stretching out the hamstrings, but pulling my legs, lying down on the floor, then pulling my legs over the top of my head. I could feel this stretch on my um, backs of the knees. And these emotions were coming up that were like 30 years old. I'm going, whoa, this is strange. I've been holding them behind my knees. So really the first thing is to discover where your roadblocks are, then realize you can get over it. So you, you discover, then you realize it. And so to realize that is you're saying, oh, okay, I've been using this as a protection mechanism. And that's been stopping me and blocking me because I've been pushing people away to protect myself because I'm thinking, oh, this is too much. I can't deal with it. Even whether you say you can deal with it or not, most like more than likely you can't from my experience because you're pushing people away. So you're not realizing that actually that's not a danger. So that's another block inside of you. So you, you discover, then you realize, then you embrace the new you that's actually starting to come out of yourself. And you're going, well, I felt something when that person spoke to me. I felt something a little bit different from what they were saying. You're embracing yourself now and you're starting to realize it's not always what it seems from face value outside of you. So you start to embrace it. And then as you're embracing your, your life and your, 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 yourself as you are, you start to actualize it, i.e. you start taking your new found self into actualizing. You're actually actualizing the life that you're doing. So you're testing it. You're going out and you're speaking to people. Is this authentic? Is this not authentic? And you start to realize that's not, that's not being authentic. They're not being face value there. This is awful, which is why it's terrible going into some meetings that I go to and go, oh, no, what are they talking about here? Because it's like, this is wrong. And I, I, I put my hand up, which is why I don't go to so many of them in my local area anymore. I put my hand up and said, but what about this, 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 and this? And they go, that's very good, Peter, but we'll speak about that next month. And, of course, it never gets brought up. Um, so I've stopped doing that. But you actualize how you feel you like i was speaking earlier you turn your intellect your knowledge into experience which turns into wisdom and then you you start to master it by learning that you discovered you realized you've embraced you've actualized and now you're starting to master but you go around that circle over and over again as you start to whittle down all of this stuff and, and polish the diamond but there's many great qigong exercises to stimulate the pineal gland but we were never when, through my early training, we would never really go into the upper um, uh, the upper chakras or the pineal gland, sixth chakra, or we call it the upper Dan John in our practice, because we were all taught that get the base strong, get your lower Dan John strong. So to me, it's about actually empowering the body, strengthening the body, getting the, the body as clean as you possibly can without... I'm not talking about being a saint or anything like that or, or being not having bad foods. I did that for a bit. I must admit, I did everything completely organic, um, all fresh fruit, vegetables, everything prepared from fresh. And then when I did get caught out uh, outside and I had a sandwich, it's like, oh, <laughs> so I thought, actually, that's not good for my body because you need to be adaptable and it can take a, an element of um, bad things. Anyway, your, your body's, can do that full stop but uh, to to build your intuition to me personally i feel connecting with your lower dan john your 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 second chakra your power your passion your creativity will help you to realize that you are a powerful being you are creative and you have passion and um, we again our passion's been taken and put into like violent or sexual films where actually our passion would be to help people. There's, there's no greater pleasure I get when I see somebody come out of a, a training session or out of a coaching session and they're almost going, hallelujah, hallelujah. They're like, really, you're thinking, oh, my, look at you. And that to me is like, wow, how much have you changed? I've got um, 
a client I'm, I'm speaking to at the moment, and uh, they've just uh, found something. So they've been working on themselves for 20 years, and they've just found something deep inside of them that they, they didn't realize that it was there. And it's only been four weeks through the 12 week course. And I'm going, this is brilliant. This is, this is fantastic. And, and now we're, we're moving that, which will help her to tune into her to intuition more so that she can navigate herself into a more harmonious life with this world. Because otherwise you're always trying to swim up. I call it walking up a landslide. One of, one of my songs I wrote many years ago, walking up on a landslide, but that's what you feel like. I'm walking up on the bad side. I just keep walking up and I'm not getting anywhere. Life doesn't have to be like that. It can be completely different. So developing your intuition, I would say, work on your body. Work on your body. Well, this is absolutely amazing. And I think everybody listening and tuning in today can see why we are getting Peter back for a second episode. And uh, so we... Um, love to end an episode with a message of hope so if you have a short message of hope that you can give us then we will talk tomorrow in depth about qigong and your coaching business so peter what's your last message for today on hope each and every one of us is a being of love and when each and every one of us connects with that love inside of us and we start to realize that each and every one has love inside of them that's when we'll start to resonate more with each other and that is coming because we've lost trust and we've lost our faith but now this is coming back and this energy is too strong for all of us to ignore it so i would say all of us just tap in and just when you just a simple thing like this just one little simple thing when you go to a supermarket and you're at the checkout and you're seeing somebody having a bad day, make a joke about yourself, make yourself look silly and make them laugh, put a smile on their face because then they will see the world in a completely different light just for that one moment yeah. to say, actually, this world isn't such a bad place. And it's really simple to do just to see opportunities like that, to share your love with somebody else that doesn't cost you anything. So I would say that. And that I am seeing when you start to resonate with that, that comes back to you tenfold. It's unbelievable. So this is a beautiful planet with beautiful people on it. We've just gone a little bit off the rails and we're coming back now. We're coming back All with right. strength. <laughs> yeah. How can our viewers and our listeners get a hold of you? Well, I've got a website, peterpaulparker.co.uk. That's uh, my, my personal website, which is really about the self-image coaching or brightbeingsacademy.com, brightbeingsacademy.com, which is the Qigong school and the self-realization school. So either way you can con connect with me. It's really simple. The, both both those websites got contact pages or social media. You, you can't miss me, Peter Paul Parker. Like my wife says, you're everywhere at the moment. What are you doing? And I said, oh, I don't know. It's just It just happens. <laughs> so, yeah. Awesome. Well, all right thank you so much peter it was wonderful and just a little tidbit on our end um this episode is our first episode of our fourth season oh. so it's something to celebrate for us as well so thank mm. you for being Whoa. that special guest for us so uh -huh. uh, we will see you all next time thank you for watching and listening to us again bringing you a lot of hope today thank you peter and thank you fran see you next time big love to you give you all a virtual oh. hug Oh, same to you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>